for anybody new to my channel, this video is in conjunction with numerous other videos which go over how chunks are generated in the first place. So if you aren't caught up, go watch those videos. If you are caught up, let's now go over the editing of terrain in Minecraft. So the editing of terrain is awfully easy to implement. All it really is is the changing of a chunk data and updating the corresponding chunk at the given chunk data's coordinates. To get started with this, the creation of a function that updates a chunk is needed. This will be done inside the world generator class. What this function does is check if the given coordinate is currently in an active chunk, gets the mesh filter and collider from the given active chunk, and runs the create mesh from data coroutine using the active chunk's world data and an action that sets the meshes of both the mesh filter and mesh collider. Now let's get into how the player looks at blocks, left clicks to destroy blocks, and right clicks to place blocks. The first action in implementing this is creating the set block function in the world generator class. Using two other utility functions, the world generator converts the world position of the block into chunk coordinates and local 3D array coordinates to manipulate an existing world data dictionary entry to be the desired block type. Now let's look at the two utility functions used in the set block function. The get chunk chords from position function converts world coordinates into chunk coordinates by dividing the world position by the chunk size. And the world to local coordinates subtracts the chunk coordinates of a given world position multiplied by the chunk size to get 3D array indices for the world data entries. So that is the code required in the world generator to allow the ease of runtime chunk manipulation. Now let's create a new class called Chunk Interactor. For the first few lines, there are layer mask variables that will help in isolating the player themselves from intercepting with the block interact raycast. A reference for the player camera allows for us to make a raycast that shoots in its forward vector. The interact range float determines the raycast evaluation range. And the world gen instance variable is there to allow for the access of the set block function. Now paying attention to the update method, we will add in functionality for left and right clicking which will be breaking and building respectively. Starting off with the left mouse button click, using the camera transform reference, the chunk interactor shoots a raycast. If the raycast hits a chunk, it would create an evaluation point that goes into the hit block that is rounded soon after. Once that is done, since in the world generator, all chunk objects have the string chunk in its game object name, Checking if the hit object's name is chunk is how to determine whether or not the clicked object is actually a chunk. If the object clicked counts as a chunk, then the set block function is called on the clicked block to become the block type 0, which in this tutorial series is an air block. Next up, in the case in which the player right clicks, instead of getting a target point that goes inside the block, it goes outwards so the block being right clicked doesn't get replaced. Now after rounding the target point, a physics.check box using dimensions of a unit cube is used to prevent the player from placing a block inside themselves. If the player is not within the bounds in which a new block will be placed, the hit object is checked if it is a chunk object or not. If it is a chunk object, the set block function is called for a block besides air. Out of random thought, I set the block to be 2, which is dirt in my project. Now that is all for terrain editing. For being able to see how it works properly, the implementation of a character controller is necessary. To see how to make a character controller, the link to a video on how will be in the description. Now once you have a character controller, attach the chunk interactor onto your player object, and set the chunk interact mask to be every layer besides the layer that is specifically meant for your player object. On the bound check mask, set that layer mask to be the layer that is designated for your player, Assign your camera transform into the player camera variable, and set the interact range to whatever you please. Since it takes a little bit of time before all the chunks are completely generated, you will have to either disable the player and enable it when the chunks are generated, or be lazy like me and offset the player a bunch of units up on the y-axis. Once that is done, if you press play and start left and right clicking the chunks, you should be able to place and break blocks. That is all for this video. In the next video, I will go over the generation of structures. So if you are interested, consider liking and subscribing. Other than that, I hope to see you all in the next video. Goodbye.